will be the uh, will be the reimbursement for all the expenses that were paid by other people for the funeral for the transportation of the body for the washing of the body for the shrouding of the body and for the burial of the body and in in america these expenses go up to five thousand dollars six thousand dollars and it's not easy to put all this burden of five six thousand dollars onto one person so the person who died he should be the one from whose pocket these expenses are paid so this is what sharia teaches us that when someone has died the first thing that should come out of his wealth are the expenses for the burial for the funeral for the shrouding for the washing and for all these things funeral related charges they should come out of the uh, wealth first once that has been completed now the wealth has left behind now the second thing that must come out of the wealth is all the debts that are outstanding this person for example now let's be realistic a person died he left fifty thousand dollars behind but he has ten thousand dollars in credit card debt that debt has to be paid if he left ten thousand dollars behind in credit cards the people behind shouldn't simply call the credit card company and say oh the person died and there's no one to take care of these uh, these balances no if he left money behind then the credit card companies should be paid it doesn't matter they're muslims or non-muslims those those debts have to be repaid if the debts are not repaid from his account allah will make him repay on the day of judgment and today because of the greed many many muslims they completely disregard this because the credit card debt is so common almost every other person has some sort of some balance on his credit card so if the death comes all of a sudden and the person dies and he has five thousand ten thousand or more dollars on his credit cards that debt has to be paid that is a debt that is not only that we get from other people that is also what we borrow from other companies from financial institutions whether that is bank of america or citizens bank or any credit union that debt is a debt that loan is a loan so when we say that debt has to come out of that wealth first it means that if there are credit cards that are not fully paid this person's wealth must cover those credit cards and the second thing if there's not enough money to cover the credit cards the people left behind should will not be held responsible but because there's not enough money to cover the credit card debt the people who were supposed to get some share they will not get anything either because there's nothing to distribute there's nothing to divide so if there's nothing to distribute no one will get anything whether in principle the person deserves half or one-third or two-third or one-fourth or one-sixth or one-eighth yes you will get one-eighth but of what if there's nothing you will get one-eighth if there is something but if there's nothing left you will not get one-eighth or one-third or half of anything because there is nothing so that's the very first thing when someone dies the first thing that must come out of his this person's wealth is the funeral expenses and then the debts that are still outstanding this is why we must make sure that we do not have any outstanding loans on our head because one once we die this will be the second thing that will come out of our wealth and if our wealth is not enough to cover then we are in trouble unless someone volunteers and says i will pay for all the debts 
that this person had on his credit cards or on or or on his head then he will be relieved otherwise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him pay for all these debts on the day of judgment and then once all the debts are paid off the next will come the turn of any wasiya any testament or will many time people make a will that this much of my wealth should be given to such and such person or such and such organization so any will they will be withheld until that time so when the time comes to fulfill the wills then only one third of the wealth of that person will be eligible for the application of wills so if the wills exceed one third of his wealth the wills will only be covered up to one third of his wealth so let's say he had seventy-five thousand dollars in all the wealth that he has left behind and he has made wills of forty thousand dollars so what is the one third of seventy five thousand dollars twenty five thousand dollars so the wills will only cover up to twenty five thousand dollars so the people who are responsible who are executors they will allow they will be allowed only to pay twenty five thousand dollars in charities they will not be allowed to exceed that amount regardless of the will even if the person made the will of forty thousand or fifty thousand dollars if it is less than one third then yes all of this will be fulfilled but if it is more than one third only one third will be the maximum limit so one third is the maximum limit so once all these things are fulfilled all these duties are discharged now comes the turn of distributing the wealth among the heirs those who deserve a share al waratha they will get their share now and now it doesn't matter the, the the ones who deserve a share they are adult or child they are mature or immature regardless of this as long as they are the child they are the children they have a share and no one can deprive them of their share يوصيكم الله في أولادكم للذكر مثل حظ الأنثيين. Now Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that the distribution of wealth will take place like this. The male child will get double of that which a female child would get. So if there are four shares left behind and there are two daughters and one son. The son will get two shares, and the remaining two shares will be evenly divided between the two daughters. So this is how the wealth will be di uh, distributed. This is how the wealth will be divided among the children. So if there is one son and two daughters, there will be four shares. One share will go to the uh, uh, two shares will go to the son. and two shares will evenly be divided among the daughters if there are two sons and four daughters likewise the sons will get double of that of daughters li dhakari mithlu hadd al unthayain islam established the rights of women in inheritance before islam no one gave any rights to women in inheritance they always deprived them whether the woman was an adult a married woman or a child or an orphan they completely deprived them of their share of inheritance islam established this law that the woman must be given their right and in many cases the woman may out of hesitation and out of shyness tell their brothers and tell other relatives oh no we don't want to share still their share must be given to them 
नौ इव 